welcome once again to It's a Mystery. You know, there are so many strange and bizarre things out there in the world. Tristan and I have been out to investigate some very strange mysteries. And here in the studio, we try to uncover the secrets that lie behind some more of them. In today's show, we solve the spooky mysteries that lurk in a Kentish village. We discover how a strange twist of fate brought two old friends together. And we reveal how colours can affect your life. It's a mystery. We try to uncover the secrets that lie behind reports of weird events. And more often than not, there turns out to be a very simple explanation. Well, Tristan has two mysteries from the same village. See if you can work out what's going on. Saltwood is a small village set in some of England's prettiest countryside. However, over the years, Saltwood has had its fair share of spooky stories and weird goings on. One dark, moonless night, some friends took a shortcut across a field on the way home from a football match. Oh, that was a top game. Second goal. Oh, we have to talk about football. Well, what do you want to talk about? I don't know, anything. What's that? They noticed some strange lights moving around behind the trees. As the lights changed position, they could make out the silhouette of a mysterious dark figure with outstretched arms. It appeared to move towards the terrified group. They stood rooted to the spot with fear. As it came closer, they could see the misshapen body was headless and had small bat-like wings protruding from its sides. They watched as the lights grew brighter and the figure even bigger until they could stand it no longer and fled into the night. Suddenly the lights and figure vanished and the field was left in total darkness. Spooky stuff. What on earth was it? A mysterious dark figure with outstretched arms that appeared to move. Were they imagining things? Have you worked out what it could be? The story soon became the talk of the village and attracted the attention of two local investigators. They retraced the steps the group had taken, but the scene they found was uh, somewhat less terrifying. How could anybody be fooled by this? There's got to be something more to it than that, hasn't there? In the field, all they discovered was a battered old scarecrow wearing rags. But then, over behind the field, was a country road. An obvious clue to the mysterious goings-on. At night, a car passing down the road and around the corner would have silhouetted the scarecrow with its headlights, and from the spot where the group stood, it would have created the impression of movement in the mysterious figure. <laughs> so that report just goes to prove that behind every spooky story, there's often a simple solution. In the dark, the people had managed to persuade themselves that the scarecrow was some sort of ghostly figure. So, okay, here's another one for you. Because the village of Saltwood was the scene of yet more spooky goings on and investigation. On another occasion, villagers began to report a strange light moving around near a road leading out of Saltwood. And one man claimed to have seen a dark, shadowy figure and heard strange sounds, like hooves. So once night had fallen, the investigators decided to look into the case. They went to the spot where the last reported sighting had occurred. It was silent and deserted. Oh dear. You got any more batteries? No. Suddenly they noticed a single faint white shape floating slowly towards them. What's that? I don't know. That must be it. That'll be it. The two men stood their ground and waited for it to approach them. Then slowly it began to move closer and closer. What on earth was it? Can you not get that thing working? Yeah. Well, as yeah, the bizarre yeah. blob got nearer, they realised that the mysterious white thing was nothing more than a patch of white hair on the forehead of a horse what? that lived in the field. The horse had heard their voices from across the field and trotted over to say hello. And when the uneven movement of the horse's head, the white patch on its nose seemed to bob randomly as it came across the dark field. Now, the horse explanation also accounts for the sound of the hooves. And once the local investigators put forward their findings, there were no more sightings of strange white lights, and the sleepy village of Saltwood returned to normal, with its horse and its scarecrow. Here's a mystery for you. We've got something here that is so mysterious, you might have to hide behind the sofa. 
It's said to have extra sensory perception at seeing things even if they really aren't there. With supernatural powers, it has been known to look into the future to predict things that haven't even happened yet, like earthquakes, tidal waves, and even the weather. And the ancient Egyptians saw it as so precious that if anyone harmed it, they would be sentenced to death. Ugh. So what do you think it is? Well, we can reveal all. Here it is. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? It's great. But there's much more to cats than meets the eye. OK, well, let's just go over here and take a closer look at Mum and Babies. Hello, Boof. Come on in. Hello. Hello there. Oh. Oh. Now, cats see using their eyes and their whiskers. Oh. Now, the whiskers are said to be the width of a cat's body, so they can tell if they can fit through something. And information from the whiskers travels along the same path as information from the eyes. And the cat's brain seems to use the two systems together to build up a three-dimensional view of its surroundings. Cats are said to have nine lives, which doesn't seem unusual when you consider that they can walk away, apparently unhurt, from a fall that would easily harm a human. These amazing animals always seem to have the ability to land with their feet on the ground. There was even one report of a cat that managed to survive a fall from a 32-storey building. Wow. Can you believe it? No, amazing. 32 stories. So, OK, how on earth can these creatures predict the future? Well, truth is stranger than fiction. Now, Mum's gone walkies around the studio somewhere, but, you know, for centuries, cats have been known to desert their homes, taking their kittens with them for up to five days before the occurrence of natural disasters, such as earthquakes. So, OK, how can they actually look into the future and predict what it's got in store for them? Well, it could be something like this. Just stick your fingers in your ears. Now, when an earthquake is about to occur, there are rumblings in the earth that we humans can't hear or feel, a bit like the vibrations from this drum. A cat can't hear them either, but it's so sensitive that it can feel the vibrations through the ground a long way before we can. Can we take our fingers out of our ears now, Yeah, Nick? OK, go on. What? OK, so why are cats thought to be so spooky? Well. In years gone by, people used to believe in witches, and they thought that cats were witches in disguise. So if anyone accidentally killed a cat, it was seen as very unlucky, because they thought that you had just killed <laughs> a witch. So now you know the amazing powers of one of our best-loved pets. Ah, they can predict weather patterns, earthquakes, and they have incredible survival skills. mystery how life has a habit of springing surprises on you when you least expect them. Good surprises, bad surprises and outright coincidences. Gail has got an incredible one for you. It all started when a Mr and Mrs Jenkins decided to visit their daughter in Scotland. Oh, seems ages since we saw her at Clare Hill. Yeah, I can't wait to see her. Oh, we're nearly there now. It's not long to go. Oh, right. Once they'd arrived and settled in at their daughter's house, Mr Jenkins decided he'd try and look up an old friend who lived in the same city. This friend was called Malcolm McCurdy, and Mr Jenkins hadn't seen him for 40 years since they'd been in the RAF together, so in fact he didn't know whether he was still alive, dead, or even still in the same city. As he didn't have McCurdy's address, he wanted to look it up. Oh, Claire, could I borrow your telephone directory? Yeah, sure. There's an old mate of mine that lives up here. I want to uh, see if I can track him down. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Oh, look. M's. M for McCurdy. M, M. M. Ah, M. McCurdy, McCurdy. Ah, eh. Oh, no. There's only one M McCurdy here. Yeah? I look a right fool if it's not the right one. So, he decided not to give his friend a call, worried that it might be the wrong person. In fact, he gave up on the idea of visiting his old friend altogether. But don't forget that name, M. McCurdy, and watch out for the next extraordinary sequence of events. 
The next day, Mr and Mrs Jenkins decided to go on a coach tour. Arriving at the coach station, they selected the journey that they wanted to go on. Hmm. Tell you what, I heard of that one. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Unfortunately, after waiting a while, that particular tour was cancelled because not enough people turned up to take the excursion. Oh, then, thanks. What can I say? So the husband and wife then went looking for a payphone so that they could call their daughter to let her know that the coach tour had been cancelled. Finally, they found one next to a nearby taxi rank. Oh, look! There's a phone box. Huh? I'll just go and call Claire. OK. I'll just hang around. OK, love. While his wife made the call, Mr Jenkins spent a few moments standing outside the taxi rank watching the world go by. Just then, a taxi pulled up right in front of him. The husband couldn't help but look at the taxi. He noticed the name of the driver displayed clearly on the window and couldn't believe his eyes. The name was M. McCurdy. Malcolm? Johnny Jenkins, I can't believe it. It must be 40 it's years. It's got to be 40. I was going to look <laughs> what, you up. What are you doing here, help, then? Help, come here. Come, come on. How are you? Welcome. Nice to see I'm okay. you. Welcome. Good. And it was indeed his old friend from the RAF driving the taxi. But where are you going? With you. Oh, come on again. <laughs> What an incredible story. And, you know, if you think about it, the interesting thing here is that this huge coincidence was the result of a number of decisions made by the husband. First, he chose not to call the only M. McCurdy in the phone book. Even if he had called the number, there probably wouldn't have been any reply as his friend was out working. Then, he decided to go on a coach trip and choose a tour that just happened to be cancelled at the last minute. Then they went off to call their daughter and as his wife made the phone call, it was him who decided to wait by the taxi rank. And just by fluke, he stood in the only spot where you would be able to read the driver's name on any taxi that came to a stop. He didn't even know his friend was a taxi driver. So could this incredible reunion just have been a remarkable coincidence? What do you think? Hello, my name is Jane Coleman. I work in Arnold in Nottinghamshire. I was shot recently by something which caused a bit of a buzz. It was a Tuesday and a busy market day. The shop that I work in was bustling with people and the street outside was also packed. For some reason, there was no display in the front window which left a totally clear view of the street. Suddenly, I could see some commotion over the road. People had stopped dead in their tracks. Some were literally frozen with fear. I moved away from my till and looked out of the shop window and got the shock of my life. There were thousands of bees in a huge menacing black swarm. The air was thick with them. I then realised something even more scary. They were heading straight for us. Ooh, it's like some kind of horror story, isn't it? One moment people are shopping and the next they're in the middle of a gigantic swarm of 10,000 bees. What would you do in a situation like that? Well, here's what happened next. The doors were shut just in time. I breathed a sigh of relief. However, we weren't totally safe. I saw some people across the road pointing to our stockroom. Then I remembered our stockroom windows were still open. We closed the windows at top speed and only a few bees managed to get into the building. Finally, a bee man arrived with his tank and spray. Luckily, the blanket of bees had settled on a drain pipe outside the shop, so it wasn't too difficult for him to get them under control. So where on earth had the bees come from? Well, believe it or not, they had originally come all the way from Italy. They were a rare variety called Italian Caucasian bees, and they are nasty. <laughs> now, apparently, they'd been in a loft a few miles away and then moved off in a massive swarm towards the shops. The people were also very lucky that they didn't get stung because these bees have a dirty trick up their sleeves. Once one bee stings, it gives off a scent which tells the other bees to attack. But don't worry, as I've said, they were a rare type of bee all the way from Italy. It 
It's a mystery to me why different colours can affect you. Let me explain. Guys, pick something out of this reel of clothes that you like the colour of. OK, let me see. Uh, well, I'll take this. I really like yeah. that sort of green colour there. Might as well give the old yellow a shot. Yeah, yeah OK, and I think I shall go with this one, the blue one. What's your favourite colour? Have you thought of it? Well, you say the colours that we choose in everyday life say a lot about how we feel, what type of person we are, and can affect how hard we work. Have you ever noticed how many school uniforms are blue? Or how many people in different jobs have blue as their main colour? In fact, it's said to be the most popular colour in the world of business. This is because blue is meant to help you think clearly. If you want loads of friends, wear yellow. Yellow is a lively, touchy-feely colour that zings when you look at it. So it's instantly attractive to the human eye. And because the sun's yellow, we associate it with energy and warmth. If you look into the middle of a rainbow, you'll find that green is the central colour. It has neither the warm brightness of red and orange, or the coldness of the blues and purples. The colour green, therefore, has a restful effect on the eye. In fact, have you ever noticed the soothing, calming effect that staring around the countryside has? <sighs> now here's a thought for all you footballers. Tristan, here you go. Oh, on the edge, oh, On the edge, oh, mate. Right. Oh. In the natural world, the colour red is used as a warning of danger. You'd know not to eat or touch a red spotted toadstool if you saw one, as the red would indicate that it was poisonous. Man has copied nature and worn red whenever they want to show that they're dangerous and powerful. For example, in 1965, the manager of Liverpool football team changed the team's whole strip to a bold and dangerous red. And that year, they won the FA Cup. And a year later, in 1966, they won the League Cup. So was it down to the colour? All right, Neil, do you, uh, do you fancy any of this food? Well, uh, 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 oh, no way. Go on, oh. it's beautiful. Beans on toast, pie and custard, delicious. Have some. Oh, there's no way I'd eat that. Look, it looks horrible. <laughs> well, that's because we're used to food being certain colours. It's just beans on toast and pie and custard. But you're used to seeing it like this. Now, the other one has just been coloured. In fact, tests have been done by scientists, and they show that if food isn't coloured the way we're used to, then we just don't fancy eating it. Yeah, it's amazing how important colour is to us, really, isn't it? Now, the next time you look at the world around you, just remember that the colours that you see there may not be there by accident. Colours can alter our moods and change the way we react to things, and even show how we might feel. So what about some of our other favourite colours? If you're into pinks, then perhaps you're more of a gentle type of person who's into things like maybe the ballet or the theatre. <laughs> Browns. If you're into brown, it's likely that you're also better suited to the country than the city. Brown is the basic colour of trees, branches, seeds and soil. And wearing it may show that you're down to earth and quite a sensible person. So there you go. If someone asks you what your favourite colour is, it might just mean more than you thought. So that's it. A few more mysteries, but still lots more remain. Here's one last mystery for you to try and solve. Thousands of years ago, before mountaineers discovered Mount Everest, what was the highest mountain on Earth? Can you solve the mystery? We'll reveal the answer next time. Last week's final mystery was, if a boy in a sweet shop has two coins which add up to a total of 60p, but if one of them isn't a 10p, what are the two coins? And the answer is, the two coins are a 50p and a 10p. If one of the coins is not a 10p, then the other one is.